We're going to start with the nation. EFCC traces 7 billion naira fraud cash to religious group. I had my son being bitten, crying when abductors called me. Supreme Court Lambas ex Adamo Arek, who do Ari for irresponsibility and criminality. CBN worries over banks' excessive forex exposure. Matadala is FBN Holdings Chairman. Government to fix Marina, other Lagos shorelines. And rumpus in, uh, rumpus in Federal Civil Service over redeployment of perm sex. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, so the major headline, the, the EFCC of the Kota Kota said that, um, that they, they will, um, are recovering stolen funds and it's sad that as it stands before the audience that the experience in fighting corruption has to do with religious leaders and even traditional leaders. Said as I stand before you, there's a matter we are um, handling of over 30 billion naira fleeced from Nigeria and we're able to trace 7 billion naira to a particular religious body. And uh, we wrote to the leader of the religious body, the next thing we saw was a restraining order stopping us from inviting them, stopping us from recovering the money. And then he used the opportunity to say that, you know, uh, that there's a um, particular religious sect that launders money for terrorists. These are the problems that they are battling. He also now used it to, to appeal to them that our faith leaders, my appeal is that those who lead our um, society from churches and mosques should develop messages that glorify industry, hard work, <coughs> probity, and contentment over riches, irrespective of how it is made. We all must stand up and be, uh, be counted in the effort to reset the mentality of our youth and the first lane to affluence is fraud. I like this speech. It summarizes what we are dealing with. But, you know, sadly, it also nice. affirms that we have so um, monetized religion that we don't, we don't preach uh, salvation anymore. Something else that we do. Committee is of good story for people to be in those states as the Lagos State Governor yesterday signed a 228 billion agreement. So this is an infrastructural agreement. They are going to be doing the Bini Asaba Road Express um, Way. It's an expressway that we have seen several times that doesn't look good. This is the contract is between um, is it. People, infrastructure will be funding it, and InfraCorp, and then to be supported by the state government, the 25-year highway development agreement initiative, a concession to Africa Plus partners. And the governor was saying that this is a, is a new system to unlock infrastructural development in the state because there's a challenge with funding. So with this integration of funding with construction company, we support we'll be able to see infrastructure on ground. I'm sure the people of Edo will be waiting that when we sign this thing, because they've always accused the governor in pre previous times of always signing, but then we're not seeing the result of the signing that takes place. We're hoping this result will be delivered. At least they'll start seeing the results in a short time before he leaves um, the house, because our, uh, the governor of Edo State is on his way, is on his way out. He's counting down. Yeah, <coughs> when he will go. So the federal government uh, yesterday unfolded plans to rehabilitate the marina and other major shorelines in Lagos State. He said the decision was to avert the dangers posed by erosion to major infrastructures like the Lagos Blue Rail Line along the coastlines. Now, the government also assured Lagos residents that the 11.8 kilometer third mainland bridge would be reopened in April. Uh, Minister of Works, Dave Omahi, was the one who made this known after they had a joint project assessment with Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu. Uh, this happened in Lagos. And alongside with uh, contractors and top directors of the Federal Ministry of Works, they spent hours in boats navigating under the third mainland bridge, uh, Qatar and Eco bridges. Now, after inspecting the lagoon sections, the minister inspected the under deck of the Qatar bridge and the Jura section of Eco bridge, and also assured Nigerians that there was no cause for fear over their solidarity. They went ahead again to inspect the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and um, you know, the ongoing rehabilitation of the flyover at Loto Junction. And they said the impact created by the current of water on the Lagos shorelines was a source of concern. And that's why they're going to be uh, working on it. So the assurance now is that the contractors will begin work on the under deck and lagoon sections of the third mainland bridge and Qatar bridges next <coughs> week. Let's see how. I have a very sad story here from the nation. Mm -hmm. So the father, Mr. D.B.C. Jegede, the father of 13-year-old Ugolami Jegede, 
who was abducted alongside 10 others in Ekiti, said that he heard the cry of his son while he was being beaten hmm. when the kidnappers were speaking to him on the phone. So this young boy was kidnapped alongside his mother, 40-year-old Esther. Uh, I think they were all part of the 10 people who were six pupils, three teachers, um, coming from Apostolic Faith Church Primary School in Ikiti, and they were abducted by the gunmen. He said that he heard them beating up his son while they were asking and demanding for money. So they asked him for 10 million naira per, per head for his, so it's 20 million naira he's looking for. Hmm. He said, this is the darkest moment of his life. I'm really perplexed and confused. I do not know what to do because I have no one to help me. He says that um, he, had, he can't even begin to imagine what his wife and son and the other, others kidnapped, what they're going through. He said the kidnappers even threatened to kill them hmm. if they don't bring the money. But he's just pleading and asking government to put money. The community have started raising money for them, uh, um, some kind of a GoFundMe, but they're just asking government to intervene and ensure the safety of these 10 people that were abducted in AKT. <sighs> Moving on now to the punch. CBN orders banks to sell excess dollars in 24 hours. House of David loses multi-million Naira, Lagos Church to fire. Ikiti, Obas threatened to invoke Yoruba gods against kidnappers. Okay. EFCC probing Nigeria air deal, says Kayamo. Makinde gives companies with explosives on a two hour ultimatum. Shareholders excited as Otedela becomes FBN Holdings Chairman. Um, Tinubu directs AGF to end $1.3 billion oil block dispute. And abductors flogged a kitty school children, says proprietor. Okay, which story? So I have the human interest story. The House of David Church in Surulere Street, Agene Jones, in Ikeja yesterday, was coated in fire and lost all its multi million naira church auditorium to the fire. According to the Lagos State um, Fire Service spokesperson, Amodo Shakiri, he said that the church's audi um, auditorium ceiling was overheating, which caused it to collapse and ignite a fire, which burnt the auditorium and all the um, equipment within it, the AC, the chairs, everything within inside the auditorium was lost. They have a conference starting today, and the, um, the senior pastor of the household of David, Ulushola Oshomakinde, says this is a painful experience. He said he heard passers-by who were mocking him, saying, where was Jesus when this happened? Oh, God. And, you know, you saw, that's the trial itself. Um, he, um, mm. he had several things that we're, we're starting the message conference um, today, but something happened. I just want to put a message out there to people. I came here this morning. Everybody was setting up. Everything was going on fine. And all of a sudden, we started hearing that there was a fire and something up there on the roof of the mm. church. I know there will be reactions and people will say this and that, but... That is none of my concern for now. The most important thing is I will thank God for life. Mm. No life was lost. Yeah. I will thank God for everything. We are not so discouraged, but we believe in God and we will still go on with the conference. So God still tries God's people. Of course. In my faith, it is, it is, it is those who are closest to God, who are loved by God, that he tries. That's, not, that's the same.